get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Great cash, homie. And away we go. You like that? You like that? It's Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment, where we just right? want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl. Before we die, and we have a packed house here. Judge trying yeah, to do, do the math on how many, One, two, three, too many in the huddle. Can we fit too many in, in the huddle. Somebody get yeah, out of the many. huddle. <laughs> Tahi, right. Tahi, get out, get out, guy. We got Judge Zolgan. We got Declan Goff, our executive producer. Yours truly, Phil Mackey. We've got Boone here for his regular trenches episode, and we have a straggler by the name of Jeremiah Searles from the O Line Committee <laughs> podcast. Oh yeah. We brought him over finally. Wow, dude. I had Only to make it took appearance. seven years. It's been a minute. I think the last time I came on a show with Mackie and Boone, Boone ended up owing me a steak. Hey, like, you're just here to see if you can coax a steak and a beer out oh, of no. somebody. You're not getting any more steak and beers out of me. I, my, my credit card is at a limit. Literally, hey. everybody <laughs> asked my wife. How many steak and beer bets does Boone owe? My wife's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. I've been doing these bets. <laughs> Forgot to tell you, Ohio State absolutely got throttled by Michigan, and now I owe another steak and a beer. Uh, honey, I'm going through the uh, the Amex charges here. Don't even uh, looks like steak up. and a beer at Murray's, yeah. a steak and a beer at Hoyt, <laughs> steak and a beer at Manny's. What's happening here? Hey, listen, uh, we could bring up Nebraska or Minnesota if you guys want, but I don't think we done. want to talk D2. We're not I mean, talking no, about Min- that. No, Minnesota's not done. Oh, oh that's right. right. Pop tart bowl. They got <laughs> good. They got good <laughs> grades. They got good grades. Yeah. So they get the consolation prize. <laughs> Work on the get... classroom, Searles. <laughs> hey, participation award. All right, give it a listen. Give it a Boone did the classic Ohio State. He didn't go there to play school. No, <laughs> I went there to play football. Leave me alone, okay? <laughs> Somehow I found the one coach. Nice Seriously, though. football. Yeah. I found the one coach that all he cared about was grades. I was like, "How did this happen?" He was like, "I told you in the beginning, got to get good grades." I was like, "I thought you were kidding." <laughs> I thought that was in front of my mom. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. I looked at him. I go, dude, grade, oh, that was right? in front yeah. of my mom. You s- <laughs> serious? Yeah, just, yeah for, for sure. Going to be in class every day. Yep, yeah. nope, no problem, coach. See, yep. mom. See, mom. Yeah, we will. That. Yeah, he was for real. It's all good. It's all good. We learned. So, hey, since we've got both you guys here, mm-hmm. uh, and by the way, I wish we should do some business here and shout out our friends quickly at Zero Res. So, okay, if you've got those... I know Boone especially, just tracking in. Jer- Jeremiah's out hunting. You're tracking mud in. Mm. Your carpets are dirty. Your house smells like kids and garbage and Judd spilled surly all over the place. So Zero nice. Res is here to help you clean your home for the holidays without having to DIY the whole thing. Go to Google. 17,000 reviews, a 4.9 rating out of five stars. Zero Res. You can call them or go to the website, zeroresminnesota.com. And get three rooms zero resified, starting at just $129. Uh, if you ask for the Score North special, just say you want the Score North special, 952 0 res or 0 res 952 res or 0 res Say it forwards or backwards. It spells the same. Zero res. Whoa. All right. Uh, <laughs> that boy, is. The, uh, wow. The Vikings. After losing two straight games, we want your take on this, and we'll get into some film stuff here too. But mm. uh, they looked at the standings two weeks ago and thought, you know, we could probably drop a game to the Broncos, and we're still going to be like a game up. The Rams are now winning. The Packers just beat the Chiefs, so now you're sitting in this sea of six and six teams. So I don't know how would you if, how how would you guys feel in that locker room right now? I mean, coming out of a bye week. I think, if anything, you're trying to get healthy, so you're feeling a little bit better. But the truth is, the way that that game happened last night, that Packers. Um, Packers, uh, Chiefs, Chiefs game. I mean, CTA. the refs completely blew that game. I'm not even going to lie to you. I mean, it was just a horrible. I'm not. I'm, I'm hit Patrick Mahomes. All of a sudden, it's like everything's out of control. The pass interference at the end of the game. So if I'm the Vikings right now, I'm like, man, we really just dug ourselves in a hole. Like if we're really looking at this, them winning was not good for us. And then you look at the upcoming schedule. We still have to play the Lions twice. We have to play the Packers again. It's going to get tough again. And for them, it's they're starting to hit this cruise. And Jay and I have talked about it, and Mackie, we've talked about it on our show. If you can go into November and December and you can just win, doesn't matter how you do it, you just win. Somehow the team will eventually start to take off because this is where you need to hit your stride. We've talked about it. It's not September, October. It's November, December. What you do right now, whether you think you won that game or not, you look up, it says you won. You're like, great. There's another one. We're just stacking them up. It's not good for the Vikings. And let's be honest, the Lions coming out and putting up a ton of points right away and being like, listen, no, no, no. We know you guys are talking a whole bunch of mess. And I love them because you know their head coaches and paying any attention to what people are saying. But them coming out and winning again, it's tough for the Vikings. And then not only that, but you lost to the Bears. 
I'm not saying the Bears didn't deserve to win that game, but you lost on four field goals. Like at some point, we have to turn around and go, hey, we're not losing like this anymore. And if we are, we have to fix it. We have, if we're going to be competitive, especially in this division, we got to go out and change something quick. Yeah, you know the way I look at it is all those all those teams you just named, Mackie. You know the 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 Rams, the Packers. They're all seem to be hitting their stride and going. And yeah, they're getting and they were behind the Vikings a bit. But now you talk about like the Vikings, they're on the skid, right? Like it, it's two completely different parts of the season in which these teams are at. Like Boone's right; those teams are hitting their stride. Like okay, we're getting things figured out. We've gotten healthy. The Vikings on the other side are like, what's happening? Who's our quarterback? Who's going to lead us? Are we going to be? A, are we going for the quarterback in the draft? Are we trying to win a playoff game? Like they have way more questions than answers, and so it's hard for me to even compare the the other teams that are trying to get into the playoffs with the Vikings because they're in completely different places in their season. But to be okay, fair, boys. yep. Go ahead, go ahead, Judd. So you're back in today. You you've been off. You've been on the beach, taking care of your kids, ignoring football. Both of you get both of you guys uh, get back in the locker room today. O'Connell mm-hmm. addresses you, blah blah blah. Tell me this: What is your faith in this team? If you're on this team right now, and how much does the, the quarterback uncertainty affect you? And who do you want at quarterback? That's a great question. I was actually just talking with with a couple guys about this because if I'm KOC. That's a good question point for Judd right there. It's, a great, it's been a long yeah, time, yeah. Searle, since yeah. anyone no, no, got, got a point. This. That's a this. great question. Mostly because, you know, I was thinking about this over the bye week, too, going, whose decision is it? Is it the locker room's decision or is it KOC's decision? And how much is he going to take into a play of his leaders? Right? Is he going to go to Jefferson? Is he going to go to Hawk? Is he going to go to Derisaw and be like, hey, what are you guys at? What are you feeling? Right? And I think if I'm in that locker room, I'm Josh Dobbs all the way. You know, I think he gives us the best opportunity to win. Now, is he going to fly off the handle and do something crazy and give us a chance to lose to? Probably. But I do think (laughs) overall, like overall, if we're really trying to win, I think he gives us the best opportunity with what he can do with his legs, what he's shown us the best of him. But I do think his leash is much shorter. Right, much, much shorter. Like you don't have the the astronaut has worn off and come crashing back down to earth. Like you need to lift off again here soon or else you're just gonna implode. But as a player, I would be very much more on the Josh Dobbs train than anyone else, just because I think he gives us the best chance to win and everyone in that locker room wants to win. And I think based on your decision, let's be honest, it comes down to KOC and whether he takes in the player's consideration or not, I think is important. Right, like Jay said, if I'm KOC, I'm going into that locker room and I'm asking the top five guys and I'm going, what do you think? What do you want? You tell me what you're thinking. Because if you go out there and you throw out, say you throw out Nick Mullins or you throw out the rookie, you've already told the team, hey, we're moving on. We're already looking to next year. And that's going to be so hard to do as a player because you're like, dude, we have five games left. Two against the Lions. That's, that's tough. You want me to go out here when we know that you basically, and that's why it's so hard as a player, is because the decisions that they make upstairs will ultimately affect the way we approach the game. If they go, hey, listen, we're Josh Dobbs all the way, then damn it, it's foot on the gas. We're here to go. We're here to win. If it's Nick Mullins or it's Jalen Hall, all of a sudden it turns to, what can they do for us next year? And all of a sudden as a player, you're like, God damn, really? It's gone to this. Yeah. Like, you want me to go play the Lions who are just kicking people in the teeth, and your only goal of this game is to see what we're going to do next year? Like, that's a hard commitment. So, for me, if I'm the team, I'm Josh Dobbs all the way, no matter what. But I do agree. It has hit Earth a little bit. I'm not saying all those interceptions were his fault. But at the same time, as the leader of this team, people are going to look at you to make good decisions. And when things go wrong, they're going to look to you even more to go, hey, get us out of this. And I think that when we first traded for him, Everybody thought he was going to come in, and this team wasn't wasn't going to miss a beat. But let's be honest. He's not Kirk Cousins. Kirk is a very different quarterback. Kirk is a very old-style pocket passer that can get the ball out quickly. He knows all his reads. He knows his threats, and he's going to let it rip. Whereas Jalen is a run-around type player. So when you're looking at this, you're like, dude, I don't – I don't really know what we're doing for the future. And that's what it comes down to is like if you keep winning and you go into the playoffs and you get that playoff win and all of a sudden it's great, you're drafting at what, 20? Jay, where would you yeah. get from? 20? 20. What's, or 21. What's that 21? 20? Hold on. Before you continue, are you guys just going to allow him to continue calling him Jalen? 
Like, am I am I the only one that has? I heard it once. I heard it once. Jaren, J- Jaren, Jaren Hall. Jaren Hall. Yeah. It's okay, Boone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Boone's here the for worst trenches. CTE yeah, ever. Third People third get at me about quarterback. one name. Yeah, They're like, not you're not gonna get that name wrong. Pronunciations. <laughs> get my kids' names wrong. Are you kidding me? I'm like, Listen, you know, I'm not. Point. I'm not one for. I'm not a name guy either. But all of you kept going. I didn't even know. It's Jaren. I didn't try to correct him once. Yeah. I will say on Josh Dobbs, it's kind of amazing. Like if you were to put together a bingo card of irresponsible quarterback play and see how many of these boxes can you check in the first month of, of your Vikings mm. career. So take a safety, uh, you know, a strip sack, uh, a near pick six, a intentional grounding. You know, like he has checked pretty much every box of irresponsible quarterback play. And it's but to be, now he's given you some big plays on the top end too. There you right? go. Like it's like it has to be. That goes back to the old like. If you're going to throw him in there and you're like, hey, it's no risk it, you're living with whatever he's giving you. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. When B.A. used to say, he'd be like, no risk it, no biscuit. you got to go out there and do something to make something. And he'd be like, yeah, you're right. Scared money don't make no money. But Taking a safety time, next. That's right. When he goes bad, you can't turn around and just throw crap all over him and be like, this is horrible. Because it's like at the same time, he just got here. Like, I get what's going on. They're trying to keep a competitive team. Everyone, I think, is looking at this like, we're still in the Super Bowl, right? Like, we're still going. For-. And you're like, no, 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 no. You're still competitive. You're trying to play for that playoff win. But then as you look at it, you do turn around and go, but then do we get our quarterback next year? I don't know. Yeah, and that's where the business side takes over. You pick after where, fifteen, you're not finding you're not, you're not finding shit. a franchise quarterback. Yeah. You're not. Is is Mullins punting though, or or is is that because I mean he's going to come in and not be Kirk, but he's going to probably be a little bit more like a Kirk uh, quarterback as, as opposed to Dobbs. Who, by the way, when Dobbs is playing well, I like a, a lot. Yeah. And I th- I think it was interesting that O'Connell went out of his way to talk chapter and verse about the fact that he was going to pick the best. QB to start who went with Jefferson as well. So that's where like I like if you went to to Hall, you are sort of just punting. Like then mm-hmm. it's like let's see. But I feel yeah. like Mullins would would not necessarily be as much of a nod to I'm g- giving up as Dobbs' inability to protect the football has just gone beyond what I can control if I'm Kevin O'Connell. But Mullins I, at the same time, Mullins for me is not this like safety blanket. Right, like I think of like the sure. Browns, they threw Joe Flacco in, right? Like that's about as safety blanket as you yeah. can go. Like wet blanket, wet towel. Like go on, Joe, <laughs> use your walker and get on out there, <laughs> right? Like Nick Mullins for me, like they have it's his own problems. Nick Mullins has his own problems to no, deal true. with, you know. Yeah. And I think a lot of those is he he likes to throw the ball, but I think he plays very cautious. And I don't see a cautious quarterback doing well in a KOC system. Right, like KOC is sling it, and I think that's why Dobbs had so much success early, is because he's like, "Oh, we're just three routes down, thirty yards plus down the field, sweet, five hundred, yeah. right?" Like, and then <laughs> like, jackpot, <laughs> yeah. Versus, yeah. I think Mullins gonna be like, "I don't <laughs> think that window's great." Where's Madison or Chandler? There he is. But, okay. Here's why I say it too, though: when you trade for a guy midseason and then you put him in and then you take him out, it's just as an older player, as a veteran on the team, I see the business side behind that, and I'm probably looking back going, "Man, they really probably are not happy with that." And as we're looking at it, it's like this was our opportunity to go out here and continue doing what we were doing. And now that we've kind of hit the brakes a little bit, you're going to pull him out, put somebody else. There's so many dynamics behind this that would mess with the whole locker room. You have no idea. And that's why they are in a different world as everyone else right now, because they're just trying to figure out who's starting this week. And that's a (laughs) shitty position. I'm not kidding you, because I was in that position. And I was in it for the good ones. When it was like we were just messing with people to see who was going to start. We didn't know it was Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick. He wouldn't tell us. Like He would just literally keep us. And it was like, dude, what? What are we doing? I don't know. What are we doing? What are we doing? Was there, a t- was there a time where they put a young Alex Boone in and the roster was like, oh, well, we're trying out these young uh, these young guards now. Alex Boone won his spot. I had to fight Leonard Davis for it, the number two overall pick. I'm not, a, I'm not ashamed to say it at all. I became best friends with him. I was very young. I got moved to guard. But it's one of those things where this is different because this is the leader of your team. This is the guy that controls mm-hmm. the football. This is the one guy that can win it or lose it. There is zero question about that. And when you have everyone looking around going, what are we doing? Then it's less ability to focus on the game plan, less of ability to start growing cohesiveness. Like I feel like when you get caught in these worlds, and I'm not saying it's anyone's fault. It's just the way that Kirk got hurt. The season isn't going well. This is where business decisions get made. And this is where everyone has to sit down and be like, hey, no matter what happens, we all got to be cool. It's like training camp. This. It's like training camp in December, right? Like yeah. position battle. Like no, like there's no time for that. There's yeah. no time for an open competition on December fourth. Like that's not how this. You works. know what? Like, We're gonna open it back up, guys. 
I think we should. Yeah. <laughs> Start tracking like like they always do at camp, like interceptions or incompletes. Where's or like Mannion? A- Someone get yeah. Ma- Mannion back oh. in here. Kirk likes him a lot. Yeah. Oh man. So hey, do you guys? Uh, I don't know how long Jeremiah can stick around, but this is Jay, this is where we fast? jump. Break some potty. No, I mean, I broke the fast on Friday. I did an 86-hour water fast. It was terrible, but felt pretty good afterwards. And I, oh yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. What's it was the good. longest that Judd Declan, what's the longest any of us have gone without solid food? 86-hour uh, water fast. I, I was on a beer fast starting on Friday. Yeah. I went to Sunday, but then I stopped it because yeah. I had to eat something. An Spons- IPA oh. fast? That's, those are the best. It was an IPS. <laughs> That's feeling good. I feel real good. Uh, before we break down some film here, and Jay, you're welcome to stay. You can find these guys, by the way, on their own podcast, The O-Line Committee, Apple, Spotify, and YouTube, just The O-Line Committee, where they break things down and uh, laugh a lot. So, uh, Judd, if people were looking for gas or convenience items, do you have a recommendation for the audience? I do. I've got a uh, actually a suggestion that's the best in town. It's the best in the state. What am I talking about? It's our friends at Quick Trip. And right now, I want to talk to you about their quality gas guarantee. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you're go- going on trips for the holidays, you want to make sure that the gas you're putting in your car is the best. Quick Trip is going to back every drop of gasoline with their quality gasoline guarantee. Get to your destination without worrying about what's in, in your tank. Absolutely imperative this time of year, especially as it gets cold and possibly snows. Just another way the Quick Trip provides great customer service. Uh, you got the Karuba coffee, oh, yeah. breakfast, lunch, or dinner, as uh, Phil and Declan can also tell you. It's your one-stop shopping for anything that you need and also a guarantee on gasoline. What more could you want than our friends from Quick Trip? Appreciate their sponsorship of Purple Daily. A shout out to our friends at AG1. So about five or six years ago on one of my favorite podcasts, the Tim Ferriss Show, I discovered AG1 products and they've added so much value to my life. So AG1, if you're, I don't know, maybe you're like me and you know, you're not always great about getting nutrition the way that you should through just natural eating patterns. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, immune support. 75 high quality ingredients with one scoop mixed in with your water in the morning or if you want sometime in the afternoon to lift that brain fog uh so check them out ag1 you're busy you're on the go and you're trying to make sure you got the right nutrients in your body if you want to take ownership of your health it starts with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin d3 k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase go to drinkag1.com purple daily that's drinkag1.com slash purple daily. Football. Okay. Football. Here we go, boys. I'll go uh, Boy, full screen. It's getting screen real crowded here. in here, Mackie. <laughs> getting hot. There this is, uh, this is an unprecedented chat. moment. It's Alex Boone and it's Jeremiah Serials telling us what the bleep we're looking at here. So a couple things here. I grabbed the first drive of the third quarter, and then it was either the second or third offensive drive of the third quarter, where the Vikings on both drives – they start with a great run or multiple great runs, mm-hmm. and then they stop running the ball on those drives. Yep. And so let's let's just take a look at some of these plays here, and you guys can tell us. This this right here is Alexander Madison's first twenty yard run since I think October tenth of two thousand twenty one. Right here that you're about to win. Was he Dude, with it's Boise? Crazy. It's crazy. He, yes. He, was in, he in didn't college. score a touchdown until like week ten. So this, this, you start the third quarter. Here we go. Simple Out zone. of the locker room, ready to rock and roll. Go back. Two tight end sets. Simple week. We're running zone. I love how Darius out here, as soon as this end collapses, he keeps it flat and gets and still allows the single to come off to uh, Tremaine Edmonds. Watch this right here. It kind of allows this block. But we all know, Jay, you know too, this B block backside is so imperative. It's a great job getting in here. It's a great job by Darisaw staying square. But see, Ed Ingram right there, get that push pound that linebacker. And Brian O'Neill's allowed to sit here, right here, and create that, yep, just like that. Create that wall, that lane. You know you got Oliver back there. Love watching him in the run game. But plays like this. Ooh, that's a pancake like, right there. Oh, yeah. O'Neal. Dude. O'Neal just with a great C block Crush. on the backside. This Dude. whole play, though, is made by Darisaw. For sure. So many tackles. Pause it right when he crosses his face. Like, right here, he takes good footwork. He comes across. But right here, so many tackles right there are just going to not even get a hand on this guy, and this dude's going to blow up the play, right? But he does such a good job. He's so athletic. His ability to redirect 
right, and come back and seal this dude to the inside, and then Reisner being able to just get hands on Jack Sanborn there. Like, everything's going, and this is where the, the zone play is always hit behind the B block, always. right, which is the backside guard and tackle coming together. And O'Neal here with a great finish. Like, this oh. is how the great zone blocks are run. You press it on the front side, you get the Football. linebackers to overcommit, and then the running back has a feeling, puts his foot in the ground, and gets north and south. Dude. I love that. And we get Brian to actually just get a pancake on someone, so you're just wearing down their defensive line. But at the same time, this will come back later because we can run so many passing plays out of this same exact look. The quarterback just dangling the ball to that running back is now going to scare everybody. So we do come back. This is the very next play. And you do come back with the two tight ends on the opposite side. So I mm -hmm. guess you're kind of right. It's, kinda, it's the same formation here. Let's I see think. what happens. Let's see what everybody does. Play action. There we go. Uh, Madison. This becomes a problem. This, but look, we'll it's exactly like we just said, right? You said this was the very next play? Yeah. Yep. It's the very same play. It's just flipped, as you can see, right? We're running weak still to the front side, but we're, we're going to sit play here. Action. We're going to hand it off. Obviously, play. Tremaine Edmonds does not bite on this, but at the same time, go back. Hmm. This, ha this used to happen a lot, and this used to drive me nuts. And when I saw this live, it pissed me off a lot. Because this Alexander Madison's going to end up in Brian O'Neill's way. What he knows, he has to sift through. And I'm not saying that running backs have an easy job, but when you see a big grown man fighting another big grown man, get the hell out of his way. They used to hit me all the time, and I'd be like, dude, touch me again. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you on this logo. Do not touch me. Watch. Watch. Look, what are you doing? Get out of Brian's way. You're blocking Brian. It drives me nuts. Dude, That's I'm going to be honest with you. I'm putting that on Alexander Madison. I think Brian but, runs him around the corner. I think Josh Dobbs can step up. Alexander has to get up in here inside this in this void. I mean, so Ty role, Chandler can't get on the field because he. Yeah, it's, so his his role there is, is to get inside more mm -hmm. so. Is, is that honestly, what you're saying? Then? Honestly, sweat. If you go back to the wide view, sweat blows this. Right, this is actually a blown assignment by the defensive end. Um, okay. He should be going into the B gap. Right, you see it right here as this linebacker comes up to cover and top over number two um, over the receiver over here. He should be going into the B gap and he is the contained rusher. But again, this dude's only been here for like what five three days. weeks now, five right. days. Yeah, and Definitely. so that's a lot easier when you're a DN, you're just a blind dog in a meat house. You're like, go get the ball, right? But like overall, <laughs> I think that's why Madison's so like Madison's so taken off by this because if he were to hand this, right, mm -hmm. if this were to be a true handoff here, this might be a touchdown. Yeah, it's right? a lot of yardage. Because, exactly. because sweat busts on the protection, right? You see the nose, the three technique over Ingram. He slants, awesome. right? So he slants inside. Boom. There's no one oh, in the B man. gap, right? Just, he yeah. is supposed to, the DN is supposed to be slanting across Brian O'Neill's face into the B gap, but he busts here. And so that's why I think Madison is just so like taken off, like, wait, what's happening? But I agree with Boone. Get out of the way. Do something so, besides okay. hitting the purple player. Yeah, so dumb purple. question, dumb question. If you're obviously you can't you can't snap your fingers and hand the ball out. You don't like it, no. that's not how it works. It's a it's it's a pass play. It's a play action. But if you're Madison here and no one's coming to the B gap, could you just no run on a run out here and get wide open? No, no, because, because the end of the day happened? nine nine is your responsibility. So if all of a sudden Correct. this dude decides late to come back underneath and nine comes by okay. and kills your quarterback and you're like, it's Well, I thought you. he wasn't coming. Yeah. Well, not that's not that, a, you'd be it's like, not a good excuse on the sideline, man. And you also don't ever want to go into the room going, <laughs> On the field, I thought this would be smart. Like unless we <laughs> talked about it or we've no, done it, fair. you're not allowed to just do it in the yeah. game. Don't I thought I would it. get open. They'd be like, I, I thought, thought you're not going to work here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you're not going to work here anymore. But he can't get benched, you guys. He can't yeah, be he, benched. He really He's never amazing. benched. I want to see amazing. more Ty Chandler, too, because he is so quick and special. And <sighs> get him So here's another one. Now, so now we're okay. We're we're uh, we're on the third play of the drive here. Yep. All right, let's keep keep passing the here ball. All right. Oh, here we're we go. We're doing a little all-out blitz. They did complete this pass, by the way. So This is a really nice job by Dobbs. Here we go. We've got a Cali look. Two in the A gap, and then watch the safety's going to come through right here on the outside. God, it's the best. It is, is so hard. This is so hard to do from an so offensive hard. line's perspective. So talking through kind of what the idea behind the protection here, if you go back to the top, go Mac. Back. So the idea here is that it's a double mug protection, right? So we're going to sort it mm. to the one side. So the, the center, the right guard, the right tackle, they have a three for four sort, which means these three guys on the right, 56, 67, 75, are tasked with picking the most dangerous three out of the four that come in whatever variation that may be, 
right? And then on the left side here, you know you're locked on man on man. So when this dude bails, right, when that middle linebacker over Bradbury bail, bails, yep. he should be screaming out, 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 right? Which then tells Madison, if that guy bails on the front side, there's only three coming, get your eyes weak, right? Left. Get your now. eyes back weak now. This guy ah. screaming through the B gap is That's 100 Madison's. billion percent on Alexander Madison. He has he's, to got to look, he's got to look left. He's you can look tell. Left. Well, you can tell because, look, the slide's going to the right, right? We're going to Rocco set here. So he's looking left, but Bang. see how he takes his eyes right to the right instead? And at the same time, look, your linebacker comes. Yep. They okey-doke the shit out of you, dude. And not only that, but six coming over here is your biggest issue because he's the run chasing this down. Now, I'm not saying the right side gets this done because it looks like Ed Ingram's trying to – and this is tricky. Remember, he just said it. You're in the middle of a Monday night game and someone's screaming, go. You can't hear a word being said out there. But Ed Ingram does a good job of trying to get Brian out there right there. See, he's trying to push him out. Yeah. But like Jay said, Alexander Madison has to look weak on this and your linebacker drops and comes back. We used to call that the old coffee house or the okie doke. God, I used to drive me nuts because I'd be like, well, who's going to get beat on that? This is such Dude, a lamest So, so if, if you're Madison, there you've is. been in the NFL now for, this is what, year five for him? And this this seems like not it's not basic for me or for Judd or for Declan, but like year five, I can see Ty Chandler in year two. Okay, we don't fully trust him in pass protection, but these are things Where's that Ham? shouldn't you have this down? Is put CJ Ham, in. Ham? Yeah, you have yeah. to put Ham in. You have to do something because this is like this right here will just continue to kill you on third down. It looks like this whole thing ends up being kind of a mess because two guys are coming free from the left side. And it's yeah. like, well, wait a minute, two guys should never be coming free. One, and I get that. And before we move on, this goes back to my point of if that's Nick Mullins, can he do this? Can he make this play? Can he yeah. make this play? Right. Right. Can can Nick Mullins make this play right here? I don't think no. so. <laughs> right. I don't think so. I think Nick Mullins is dead. Right. They're it's scraping him up off the no, forty. Really, they're scraping him play. off of the thirty five. Jalen Hall could make this play, I feel like. Jalen, man, he's a special player. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> what is it? Jared. Explain this, Jared. Jared. Jared Explain this, guys. Though, how how does so at, at this point we're what twelve games in, thirteen week weeks in. Yep. Madison is, I think, a well-meaning, nice guy, and I think he's well, we well liked. But if you're his teammates, like what? It feels like he's got some type of pass to just keep playing and keep playing. This is a brutal sport, really, really tough sport. I feel like in the locker room at some point in time, especially you guys. Who are paid to block would say, "What are we doing here? Like, what? Like, what does this guy do so well that he just has this weird, like, lifetime 2023 pass at least to play consistently? What's what's that like eventually? You know, it's one of those things that we will never know because we never see practice, and that's the thing. Maybe he's nails in practice. Maybe during yeah. the week he's he's crushing it. He's knocking it out of the park. He's seeing everything, and the other guys aren't." Right, and it's a hard thing for a coach to see a guy do it in practice and think he's not going to do it in the game. But eventually, you have to start going. If it's not translating, we have to right. try something else. Right, and obviously, it's not translating. But also, Madison, his first four years was never really a third down guy, in my opinion. No. Right, like he was kind of the the hammer first and second down, the bigger back. We don't have like a guy that I truly believe, like a Jarek McKinnon for Kansas City. That can come up on third down. He can run screens. Mm. He can step up in the A gap and smack a linebacker. Like all those things. That's a big piece. This running back room is missing right now. Is a guy that you can trust and play, play action and trust in pass protection. Also out in the screen game and third downs because that's not Madison's wheelhouse. So I agree with you that there's probably something going on where there's just not a lot of trust in the rest of the room. And you're like, well, we have the most trust in this guy, and we paid him. Right, like right. there comes a piece of that, but eventually, the, eventually the old line is going to step up and go. We're getting blamed for a lot, and some of it's our fault, rightfully so, but some of it's not, and we need to figure out what's going on. Yeah. I think we would have started had a meeting, a lot more meetings with the running backs at that point. We would have yeah. sat, we'd have brought them in and been like, all right, what's the problem with protection? What don't you understand? When we point right, you go left. Are you really that stupid that you don't <laughs> yeah. get what's going on in here? Like, let Jay tell him. Would I not have yeah, been like, 100%. are you an idiot? You're not figuring this out like the rest we of the world? We told who was the back we asked if we had to paint one shoe red, one shoe yellow. <laughs> oh. We're like, hey, red is right, yellow is left. We need to paint one shoe red because he just couldn't figure it out. right? And it is one of those things where we used to have, we called the secret squirrel meetings. Yeah. On Friday, Friday afternoons, it was the quarterback, the O line, and the running backs. And we went over every third down protection blitz cut up. It took an hour and a half and that was how we were like everyone was on the same page and everyone had to be there i don't know if that happens now but you know that was a way to make sure everyone was on the right track so this kind of stuff doesn't happen 
Yeah. Whose shoes it, did, did you, you want to pay? There's no way that both of you guys forgot who that was. I'm no try, way. I'm trying to remember. Come on. I remember where I was when I heard it. I started <laughs> laughing hysterically. Like, I can't be was this. Was it Adrian? Bad. No, he was never no. in on third down. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, and Chester was Taylor it, was, was it, good. Was it rookie Jarek McKinnon, and now he's better no. in Kansas City? No. no. Was Jarek was always nails. Was it, it, was, uh, it, was a, was it Balake? No. It might have been Balake. Balake? It was, it, was in, it was during training camp. It was during training camp. It was during training camp. It was a body. Where, okay. Yeah, it was a body that was in there, and we were all like, are you stupid? Yeah, like it's really not that hard. I pointed that way. Can you not like understand? Like, that means we're going this L R loser type of thing? Like, yeah. I'll tell you where we're going. We're going oh this God. way. You go the other way. <laughs> so now it's now it's fourth and seven here. Okay, and again, I don't know. And, and you could probably make a case for yeah, you ran the ball for twenty one yards. Now do a play action off that same look, and it do, it doesn't work. And now, but now you get the now it's fourth and seven, and we'll see what happens here. This is a ballsy call, by the way, in a close yeah. game in which your defense is awesome. And There's Chandler. The Not really. I'm all about this call. Their offense hasn't done anything. Hmm. I know. So it's just one of those I where don't, the route is either a yard up, We got an odd front. Some people call this a odd ruby. spinner. Spinner, because yep. that 91 is a D lineman on the outside of him. See him out there? So we're all probably going to be pushing to the right here, which puts 53 on this duel with Derisaw. Oh, here comes Chandler. Oh, no. 5 0. So they fan it, right? So they fan it on the right side. They duel it on the left side, meaning that they're sorting that. Reisner's sorting 53. If 53 were to bounce bail, then they'd push out. And then Chandler just picks up anyone else here, right? So they do a nice job. But this is one here where Ed Ingram, it's a good initial set. But yeah. the second he gets that inside arm in there like that, it's really hard to come off on the twister. It is. O'Neal does a fantastic job taking this twist away with just his initial set, right? That's a hard thing. A 2D lineman standing outside of you here, he goes straight back on the line, vertical, boom, boom, waits. Ed's got a good set. But if he Feels puts it. that, if he just passes it with his right arm, he can settle with depth back inside and get this guy. And I'm not saying that this makes the play. Like it, it just affects him slightly. But this is another one where I think he should throw Chandler sneaking out the back end on the left side of this play here. Probably gets you the first down. But this is going back to he's just trying to make a play with a guy that he trusts and throwing it to Hawk. But yeah. Chandler sneaking out on the left side here is going to win that battle against the safety if you go back to the wide angle. But I bet it, I bet if I were him too, I'm thinking I'm going to throw it to TJ at the line and I'm going to let him compete for that first down. You know what I'm saying? Like, watch here. Just watch made as a good Chandler play. escapes out. Like mm. I think if you hit Chandler down here at the bottom, it's a big game. That's yeah. a big game. We saw him against the Broncos do it right. Yep. Like he he can make those. That's 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 a big time gain. And that's again just a guy trying to make a play, finding his playmakers. But it's a tough one when it's fourth and game and those type of fourth and uh, seven. You got to try and make those plays. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can we fast forward here? By the way, let's 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 go to the the last drive offensively where the Vikings are up ten to nine. Ooh, bar it's burner. a four minute offense. You probably need. Yeah, look at this. It's just it's as as Troy Aikman said. It's a high scoring baseball high scoring game baseball here, at game. US dude. That that Damn. theme traveled all weekend because they were talking about it on the red zone. He's like, let's go back to the high scoring baseball game. <laughs> yeah, just uh, laughing at everybody. Patriots game. Puke. Here we go. Oh, look so at this. this. Is, actually is this thirteen personnel? Is this thirteen? You want to talk about getting dirty? Mm, look at that the double a gap. Yeah. One, oh my two, god. Three tight ends here. Got him on. To me. Talk to so they know they know you're probably running here, right? But so that's that's part of the the cat and mouse game. But did you first of all, did you guys have a problem with the run run pass play sequencing in this situation? This is right after the fumble recovery from Fields, correct? Yep. 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 I, I didn't have an issue with it because at this point, KOC doesn't know whether to trust 15 or not. And that's right. a scary place to be as a play caller. Mm -hmm. That's a really scary place of like, do I let this guy go or do I not? You know, but this is this is I liked the play sequence here, and honestly, it's a really well blocked play. Madison misses the read, and I'm not here to try and and poop all oh. over number two here. I'm really not trying to do this, but this is a simple duo play, right? Duo, you got tight end, you've got double teams, right? Darisa or um, excuse me, Reisner and um, the center here, Bradbury, gonna, Bradbury. Bradbury going to 57. <laughs> we're we're gonna Ed's, basically yeah. Ed's on his own. O'Neal and Josh Oliver. This is an A-gap play on the right side. That's the initial aiming point is he's going to the A-gap to the right of Bradbury here. This opens up right there, like, yeah. and he needs to spit it back out the left, let it play out here, right? It gets, dude, Ingram's got Brian, the big boy block. Brian does a great job of creating a wall yep. here. As he lifts up, sweat, and he stops. See how everyone's coming off the edge? They're all trying to slant in here. 
Brian does a great job of stopping that initial charge, which creates this void right here. And that right there, without a question, is exactly where you need to hit this ball. There is no bouncing duo. You are not allowed to bounce mm -hmm. duo. It is, is he getting scared because run. Bradbury is literally like I don't know why you're getting here. scared. Put your helmet down your and helmet run. And it's duo. We know gap. you're coming through here faster than a bullet. We are trying to just get hat on a hat so you can run right there. That's it. Everybody knows we're running duo. There's no reason for him to stop his feet in the backfield, right? If you go back, you see him start to stutter, right? Just pound it up in there. Just find a way. Find a hole. You ping bong off people, right? If he's going full speed through the A gap, you can tell me he's not going to bounce off Oliver, maybe yeah, bounce off Bradbury right. and be able to keep his feet and at least fall forward for five. Get four yards. Get four yards. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that's just him trying to make too much there. Just trust the read and go. That's got to be it's frustrating actually a well blocked hell, play. Well blocked Boom. play. Like that's and a really well blocked play. Like you he can't should ask get, Bradbury to do anything else. There's no reason. Honestly, your tight ends and like that's Addison, dude. Don't run out where those dudes are blocking. Run where the <laughs> teeth of your offense is blocking. <laughs> yeah. Right. Here we go. Let's see if we so go second do second down. It's the exact same play. I know, I love it. That's why I'm like, dude. <laughs> so it is. So it's just it's flipped. It's the exact right? same so play, going... right? I, I play it out, but I'm pretty sure this is the exact same play. Okay, here we go. It'll be a tray. Still be an A. Nope, they go oh, out they want the zone. To. Go back. Oh, this was so close. Right, so you're giving the illusion of the same play, right? You're giving the illusion of the same play, and then you flip and go a zone off of it, and this is the right call because you have numbers over here to the right. Go back. Mm. That's right there. The hole's right there. Literally right there. I think Reisner's the one that misses yep. here. The problem is the 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 nose to the right over Ed Ingram kind of gets a little penetration on Bradbury, which isn't really necessarily bad because it's a handoff, but it looks right, like yeah. backside it kind of starts to hold up Dalton right there. See how he gets allows that three technique to get through mm. there? I know. It's well blocked play too. It's so close. It's such a it's such a close play. Ideal world, if you go back to the top, like ideal world, you have Ed Ingram here is gonna instead of working a double, which is the guard and the tackle working together, you'd like him to go vertical through ninety seven shoulder to put a wall on that, right? Because if he goes vertical through ninety seven shoulder here, at worst, at worst, that DN's got to at least run through some of the trash as he's trying. That D tackle over Reisner's got to run through some of the trash instead of being mm -hmm. able to skate through it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But because he got penetration, he can come straight down the line now. That's you're not. Darius never gonna be able to cut off a two eye. No, like that's that's just not a thing he's gonna be able to do. But this play is so close to being a one on one with the safety, which is why I don't have an issue with the plays that were called. It just was no. a poor execution. Yeah, but and even so, I see why Dalton what kept going through because on this play, you're thinking. What is it? Fourth and one still, right? No, this what was this? Second. No, this was uh, second, this is the second, second down. Right? Second, second and down. Second eight. down. Yeah. When you're when he Jay talks about that two eye coming out as a tackle, you're not thinking you're going to collect that two eye. You're thinking if there's any void, like Christian, you saw him just going through. That's exactly what you should be thinking. That's just a good play by the D tackle too. Yeah, Judd, go jump in, Judd. You were going to. But say the first something. miss, the the first miss on on the hole that was there becomes huge, right? Because that that was your chance. Like the Bears did a good job You're talking about on the first down this one, player. but on first down, right when Madison had the chance to get through that hole and decided to start to dance a bit, and then bounced. That's where there would be frustration between the O line and the coaching staff with the fact that he didn't hit that hole. Right in the film room, yes. You know, in real time, in real time, it's hard because KOC yeah. doesn't get to see that. Right. Yeah. So in, in real time, he's like, "Man, I want to call another run, but what happened there?" Right, like I don't know. I, I can look at the big board and try and see what happened, but I got forty seconds here to call another play. Right. right. That's when you get in the locker room or you get in the film room on Monday and you're like, Oh, well, shoot, I guess we could have probably tried to get back to that play, but I didn't know how it blew up in the first place. By the way, right. you notice this this is the third and eight play, and who do we trust in, in a in Am, pass bring pro? his ass in? Bring him bring in, Bobby. Hey, Hammond, right? um, yeah. Bring him in. Third bring down him specialist. Him. I was going to say, to Jay's point, too, when you come off the field and you're like, hey, what happened out there? You're getting 11 different stories. Well, this is what happened in my perspective. And then all of a sudden, the coach, coaches are literally like, you know what? Never mind. We'll wait till Monday. Yeah. Don't pull up the, the, the tablet that has the still shot on it that gives it's no terrible. information. Right, yeah. That's it's also, terrible. So just like black and white aerial photos. Dude, it's like, awful. <laughs> and it always is like one second after the snap count, so everyone's in like weird body positions. He's like, what happened here? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> See, you're standing up here, Sarrells. <laughs> <laughs> it's a picture, like right, coach. Shut up. It's like right, it's like right here, freeze frame black. Yeah, that's and exactly, exactly what you see. That's exactly what you see. What happened? 
And they know. go, tell us what happened. Yeah. You're like, no. Stepping on each other's feet <laughs> oh, here, it looks like. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. So this is, this is a chance to kind of put the game away, and it's it's a third and eight. And Again, real doesn't conservative. Trust, doesn't trust 15. To put, I mean, he's had a shaky game. You want to give a high a high percentage throw here, give your guys a chance to make it in space. But, I mean, the Bears were all over this because they hadn't pushed it down the field, and so they weren't, they weren't scared of it, right? Look how close the safeties are. Yeah. Like, the corners were pressed. They weren't scared of a threat down the field because they knew that 15 had not been doing well. Yeah. So, yeah, just kind of, I don't know. I think it'd be nice to see the Vikings develop more of, uh, oh, Declan, you can sort these out here mm, and get them in the I right order. But it'd be nice like to this. see them when, I guess, when, when and there was another drive there too that they started the, the second drive of the third quarter with 11-yard run, 7-yard, like they, it was three runs to go from the 25 to midfield. And then they just, then they throw six passes for, 10 yards total. So even when they get something good going in the running game, they're just so quick to be like, oh, oh, something bad happened, abandon, throw the ball six times. I mean, it's KOC's DNA, man. He can't not yeah. throw the football, right? Yeah. Like, there's certain coaches that they just, they can't help themselves. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, yeah. right? But, like, they literally, they're like, I haven't, I haven't called a pass play in a while and start yeah. itching. <laughs> like, they're like, ah, throw it! Right, they just can't help the fleurs like that. Yes, oh, Lef- yeah. like, same yes. thing. He's like, I gotta throw. Versus, you know like, do, do it, just do it. Versus the Lions, they're like, Nah, we're just gonna keep handing this thing off. Right, like, uh, third and eight, we'll run a little outside pitch play. Like, they yeah. just, it just depends on what the DNA of your team is built like. And KOC is just gotta throw it, gotta yeah. throw it, gotta throw it, gotta throw it. Yeah. So there you go. Wow, what a treat Football. here. The old line committee guys. That's great, boys. Jeremiah, Thank you. Booney. We learned a little something today that we didn't know yesterday, man. Um, appreciate you guys coming on here. Yeah. Now you can go back it. to your big boy, your big boy job. Go back to my big boy training job. Training offensive linemen. Say, and... Now we got to go back to real work. <laughs> Start breaking down more film. Hey, but the it's real the real win today is Alex with uh, a mic processor, a louder Whoa. microphone. Yep. A big win. Good for you, buddy. Hey. He's growing up in front of our eyes, boys. <laughs> you know what? I took He's a learning hard stand how to speak this weekend. into I, the microphone. It's I, a hey, novel concept. I took a hard stand this weekend. I so, said, you know, I'm going to start taking this more serious. You're right. Everyone's upset. I'm going to get I'm gonna get this little thing. But keep the kids more quiet. I got it. I got you. I got you. <laughs> They're just yeah, you're tied in a different up in the corner right now. tied up in the corner right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you've moved. No, no, it's the same room. It's the same, no, same room? Exactly. Same okay. stupid it's chess boards on the wall. See the backgammon board there? Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Bob, okay. Right. Award. You're welcome. Right. Well, the kids are out, though. You Ding. the kids out. Yeah, self suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, appreciate you boys having me on. Awesome. Thanks for coming, Jeremiah. Thanks, Jeremiah. Our guy, the Rhino Alex Moon. Dex, tell the audience if they're hungry and looking to golf at the same time, where should they go in the North Loop in Minneapolis? Listen, I'd recommend uh, I'd recommend Three Jack, especially with uh, golf season now winding down. Three Jack in the North Loop in Minneapolis, great great place to get your swings in on that simulator base. They also have phenomenal food. Okay, they got loaded nachos that is always a favorite of ours here. The chicken sandwich is delicious. There's plenty of great options, and also if you got like a holiday party coming up, you got family coming to town. You're looking to host them all. You don't want to have them all running around your house. Go to 3Jack instead. Go to 3Jack in the North Loop uh, in Minneapolis. They can host people from up to a dozen to 200 people. So go check out 3Jack and go to 3Jack.com for more information. Also, a shout-out to our friends, to uh, Federated Insurance, like having a great offensive line for your business that doesn't blow protections, mm. okay? It's like a brick wall. Five by insurance yesterday. friends <laughs> standing in front of your business. Uh, looking to maximize your business through risk management. All sorts of information, tools, and resources you can find at federatedinsurance.com, which is based in Minnesota. They are one of us, so to speak, in Owatonna, founded in 1904, so over 100 years of experience helping businesses. Federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. All right, that's a wrap. Purple Daily, presented by Quick Trip Daily, Vikings Entertainment. We'll see you guys tomorrow.